across now to Leonid Petrov. He is a North Korea researcher at the International College of Management in Sydney. Mr. Petrov, uh, thank you for taking time to speak with us here on TR2 World. Um, so during you, the U.S. presidential debates, Joe Biden said Trump wasn't just a thug, but like he said meeting Kim Jong-un was like meeting Adolf Hitler on the eve of World War II. And Biden promised to return, quote-unquote, principled diplomacy in dealing with North Korea. Easy task or not? Well, we uh, know that um, Vice President uh, Biden um, didn't achieve much during the um, president, former President Obama administration. Um, it started uh, quite nicely in 2012, but uh, soon the U.S. administration was very disappointed with Kim Jong in um, launching intercontinental ballistic missiles and continuing to detonate nuclear devices. So it looks like there's a um, bad blood between uh, President-elect and the leader of North Korea. I think we don't need to expect uh, much of the breakthrough which uh, uh, provided was provided by the Trump administration. It was a window of opportunity for North Korea. There were three summits between uh, President Trump and uh, leader Kim Jong-un. Uh, there, there was some results to that. Uh, there was the moratorium, self-proclaimed moratorium on nuclear tests and intercontinental ballistic missiles on the North Korean side. side. And um, there was a freeze for a freeze principle, uh, which um, was replaced uh, and may be replaced um, this time by the continuation of the strategic patience policy, which didn't bring any result in the eight years of Iraq. Uh, President Trump has not been able to get North Korea to relinquish its nuclear capabilities, of course, but his meetings, I believe there were three of them with Kim Jong-un, did raise some hopes that a compromise could be reached. What does North Korea want exactly in exchange for giving up its nuclear arsenal? Well, North Korea made it very clear that it needs uh, three things uh, to be promised and delivered. Uh, of course, it should be the lifting of san international sanctions. But North Korea is under sanctions, um, multilateral, bilateral, international, uh, for the last 70 years since the start of the Korean War. So it's probably time to move on and end the Korean and lifting of sanctions is the first precondition. Uh, also, the diplomatic recognition uh, would be uh, very important for North Korea. Uh, to, to accept because at, at the moment it cannot uh, start any international trade because there's no diplomatic relation between Washington and, and Pyongyang. So uh, we see that um, lifting of sanctions, diplomatic uh, recognition and uh, relaxation of uh, trade um, would, and security, uh, security assurance is of course a very important factor in this because the attitude of U.S. government to North Korea it is, is not... Uh, is not official, but it's again it's a continuation of the state of war. So as long as North Korea treats, uh, I understand that North Korea, uh, United States may st step forward and uh, forward deployed um, forces may attack North Korea and the regime changes in the cards. Uh, potentially uh, forces North Korea to think about its uh, defense and uh, nuclear capability. It's a psychological deterrent matter. So North Korea is not going to give up its um capability without the three promises of the U.S. government. And the regional um, allies of the U.S. also must follow through. Relations with South Korea um, is also an important factor in this. And uh, President Moon Jae-in, uh, I believe, plays a very important role in um, not only inter-Korean relations, but also the regional peace and stability. So I think that Joe Biden should follow recommendations from uh, President Moon Jae-in of South Korea. Right, Mr. Petrov, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for that.